Nerva, a temporary emperor. Nerva seems to be a man who was always betting on the right horse. He was quite prominent during Nero's reign and received a triumph. Uh, he was a friend of uh, Vespasian and became a consul under him. Uh, he became a consul once again, together with uh, Domitian. At some point, he probably decided to bet on himself. But it is not entirely clear. Uh, we don't know how much he was involved in the assassination of Domitian. But since he was declared the emperor almost immediately, anyway, Nero seemed to be a good option for pretty much everybody. Uh, he was old. Uh, he had no children. His health uh, was very poor. Uh, he was a skillful bureaucrat. Uh, he appeared to be loyal to the Flavians. So, theoretically, he could be accepted by the people who remained loyal to the recently deceased Domitian. Nerva was doing pretty well, uh, but he didn't really have a serious backing of the army. About a year into his reign, the Praetorians took Nerva as a hostage and demanded the execution of the people directly involved in the assassination of Domitian. Uh, this bizarre episode uh, demonstrated how vulnerable the position of Nerva was. So he decided to publicly adopt as his successor a popular and very influential general Marcus Ulpius Trajanus, uh, now known as Trajan. Trajan later executed the Praetorians who rebelled against Nerva, but it happened after Nerva died, apparently of old age. He ruled for about 15 months. He was either 65 or 62 or 71 at the time of death. The sources contradict each other. And here is the problem. The twelve Caesars of Suetonius ends with Domitian, so we don't have an account on Nerva's reign or on any other emperor after Nerva. Tacitus also ends with Domitian, so we rely mostly on Cassius Dio and the summaries of Roman history. Another two important sources, uh, Historia Augusta and Herodian, uh, we'll start only at the reign of Hadrian and the reign of Commodus, uh, respectively. So, Nerva and his successor Trajan are kind of problematic. Uh, but for Trajan, uh, we have letters of Pliny the Younger. Trajan, the expansionist. Trajan ruled for almost two decades and is widely considered one of the most successful and talented Roman emperors, on par with Augustus. He started the period when the Roman Empire was at its peak, and this period lasted for almost a century. Uh, he's the second of the so-called five good emperors, uh, a term uh, introduced by Niccolo Machiavelli, uh, a line of highly capable rulers. Nerva is the first of these uh, five emperors, uh, mostly an honorary member of the club. Uh, frankly, he hasn't done much, but he adopted Trajan. Trajan is mostly known for his military operations. He expanded the limits of the empire to a historical maximum. He annexed Dacia, Nabatia, and uh, as a result of a successful war with Parthia, Armenia, and Mesopotamia. A large part of Dio's account of his reign, and Cassius Dio is our main source, is uh, the descriptions of uh, military campaigns of Trajan. Apart from war, Trajan was uh, responsible for the massive uh, construction projects. The Forum of Trajan and Rome is the most visible example. But that also included bridges, uh, roads, aqueducts, uh, everything. It seems that Trajan somehow didn't have a clearly designated heir. Uh, he was succeeded by his relative, uh, Publius Ilius uh, Hadrianus, or simply Hadrian, uh, through a very suspicious act of uh, adoption. Uh, Cassius Dio insists uh, that this adoption uh, was orchestrated by Trajan's wife, uh, Pompeia Platina, 
who favored Hadrian and really wanted him to become the new emperor. It was presented that Trajan adopted Hadrian on his deathbed, although Hadrian himself uh, wasn't present and the official documents were signed by Platina. But the transition went uh, smoothly. Uh, only a few senators were killed. 